What's going on, DP? My name is Miles Shaddix, and I'm here with... Chloe Miner. James Weirdo. And we're here at the Santa Barbara International Film Festival for this year's Writers Panel. Let's get right into it. Hi, how's it going? Hey, good. Tony. Uh, so my name is Miles. Uh, I'm part of a local high school called Dos Pueblos, uh, and we have our own uh, broadcast uh, center called DP News. What? Uh, so that's what why we're... What high school is this with its own station? A very great one. All right. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, could you tell us a little about your your, uh, your film? Uh, yeah, it's called Poor Things, and it's uh, the story. It's sort of a Frankenstein movie in a way. It's a comedy, and a young woman gets her baby's brain put in her head and goes on a journey. A coming of age story, really. Yeah. Um, it has such a, a unique style to it. Um, how did that come about, uh, and how does it compare to your your previous films that you worked on? Um, it's yeah. Well, each each film's unique. I guess this sort of favorite was very much a period film that. Sort of genre twist. This was like a, a, a sort of. Um, it was a lot of things. It was satire. It was a comedy. It was coming of age. It was a bit sci-fi with the Frankenstein thing. So it was just like we sort of. I just created a sort of sensibility around what that would feel like, really. Yeah. Um, and with having a, a leading role like Emma Stone, yeah. um, when you were writing it, did you envision any certain actor uh, to play that role or actress? Uh, not when I wrote the first draft. By the time I think I was on the second draft, I knew Emma was going to do it. And um, obviously I know her quite well because of The Favourite and Cruella. But, um, so yeah, I mostly write not, hit, not imagining actors do it, but I, I mean I knew Emma was doing it and she was a producer, so you know, I was just happy about that. Who's not happy with Emma Stone doing a movie? Um, if you could give a message to any students who are trying to enter the film industry, what would you recommend? Uh, I think I'd recommend just um, make sure you enjoy the craft of what you're going to try and do because the business of it is very hard at times. Uh, it's very fun, obviously, but it's also like if you enjoy your craft and then you enjoy writing or you enjoy working camera or whatever, as long as you always enjoy that experience, then you can handle all the, uh, the vagaries of it, I guess. Uh, and, and lastly, when creating the, the script, were there any challenges that you ran into um, with possibly the plot or the character development or, or whatnot? <laughs> yes. I'm yes. sure there was, there was many that, branches. Everything you, everything you just said. Yeah, yeah, the whole thing is a challenge. You know, you've got to work out the characters and how they inter make the structure and then how that all intersects. And then you've got to work out what it sounds like and what the dialogue's going to be, the construction of the dialogue and how that's going to work. And so there's a bunch of things you're always like, that's why it's fun, you know, it's a big challenge. All right. Cool. Thanks, man. Yeah. Uh, it's great success. Uh, thank you so much for your time. No, it's a pleasure. Thank yeah. you. Hi, my name is Miles. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Um, so I'm a part of a, a news broadcast at our school called DP News. Um, obviously, your film Past Lives was, you know, an amazing success. Uh, would you be able to tell us a little bit about it? Um, yes, uh, it is about it is a story that spans uh, many decades and many continents, and it's about uh, these two friends uh, reconnecting over uh, vast amounts of time and space. Uh, and it's it's a very deeply woven uh, story with with meaningful connections. Um, what was the inspiration behind this uh, film? Well, it really was about this one moment in my own life where I found myself sitting in this bar in East Village between my childhood sweetheart who uh, had come to visit me from Korea, who only speaks Korean, and uh, my husband that I live with in New York City who only speaks English. And I was translating between these two people because I speak both languages. And I realized that in the middle of translating that I actually um, also feel uh, like I'm translating between parts of my own history and parts of my own self. And I think this moment left such an impact on me that I felt like I had to write it. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, when bringing this film to life um, and creating the script for it, were there any challenges that you faced? Well, I think that every day it is just like a work towards sort of like making the script the best version of it it can. So in that way, it is, of course. But I think the main part of it is that uh, the thing that I, you want at the end of it is for you to know that this is telling an amazing story. And, there, and then, of course, once you have uh, written a script that people are also moved by, then they're going to feel moved to uh, make the movie. Yeah. So I think some of that is what's, uh, what's difficult, but it's also what's really fun. Yeah, that's great. Um, if you could give a message to any students who are trying to enter the film industry, what, what might it be? Um, I think that uh, the main thing is to uh, 
be open and be uh, available for feedback and always be listening to every single thing that comes your way. But at the end of the day, uh, uh, the thing that matters is what you know about the story and also to always trust yourself when it comes to uh, what you know because you're the author. So it's really a, a balance of like, you know, being open and, and available, but also uh, knowing that, but at the end of the day, I know best. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank, thank you so, you so much. much. Thank yeah. you. Hi. Do you have time for a couple questions? Yeah. Hi. Uh, so my name is Miles. Uh, I'm a part of a local high school news broadcast called DP News. Um, would you be able to tell us a little bit about your film? Well, uh, it's Anatomy of a Fall, and it's uh, it's a courtroom drama, and it's uh, also a family drama, and a, yeah, uh, it's a long film which uh, layers a lot of uh, different uh, different issues. I personally would just like to say I absolutely loved your film. Oh, I right. thought it was amazing. Um, but um, the way that it's told just opens so many doors and possibilities for especially the ending. But um, there's so much detail to, to the characters and their development. Um, are you able to tell us a little bit about how that process went about? It was long. It was, we, we had a, a long time ahead of us, so we took that time. And because we work uh, together with Justine and we live together, it was... Uh, it was possible to take that much time to, to work and so it was an intensive process of writing but uh, we, we progressively understood where the film was taking us so we, we, we let it roll and, and, and but it was hard work. Yeah. Um, do you think that the film might have brought as much success if the gender roles might have been switched with the husband and the wife? Because I, I thought that it was amazing yeah, how it was portrayed. I, can, I cannot imagine the film otherwise. So uh, the whole point of the film was was uh, with this uh, central character. He's a woman and, uh, and in a way the defeated uh, uh, character was the husband. And uh, so, yeah, it would make no sense to reverse and to... to, to so no, the film could not exist uh, in another way. Yeah. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the script was uh, written during COVID, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So um, you and your partner were um, hand in hand uh, inside of the yeah. same household, and yeah, yeah, and it, yeah. it, it almost our kids. yeah, it, it almost resembles um, a lot of the characteristics yeah. of the film. That was uh, the 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 confinement and the the the, the idea of of being. Yeah, uh, because also in the film, the, 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 the courtroom is also a confinement, so it's all between four walls, and yeah, it has some, some parallels with, uh, with what we experience, but I mean, we, we, it's a fiction. We, 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 we picked some, some topics that, that are close to us, but also close to a lot of people, and we made it into a pure fiction. Um, if you could give any sort of message to students trying to enter the industry, what would it be? Um... I would say first, not try to enter the industry, not try to see it as an industry, try to see it as, as, as a form of expression, a form of art that you have to do with, with, uh, with the good people around you, with no... Uh, it has to stay a game like it has to stay in a mature game and I don't consider myself as a professional but this is also because I don't come from from the United States I don't I mean the way we work in France is really different than Hollywood I guess but still I think the idea of being an amateur is is I think very precious because you do it amateur comes from the word uh, Amour, love. And so it's, it's, it's doing some, something out of love. That's good. Well, that's all we have for you tonight. Once again, I'm Miles. I'm James. I'm Chloe. Here at the Santa Barbara International Film Festival. And this has been DP News.